Hello, hello everyone. My name is Laura. This is my channel, Laura's Little Library, and welcome to today's video, which is my 2023 bookshelf tour. So I try and film a bookshelf tour at the beginning of every year because these past few years I have changed my shelves significantly or I have moved so there's always something new to see and with all the addition of the books and just constant rearranging I think filming one every year is a lot of fun. So it is now time for the bookshelf tour for 2023. I'm really excited because this year we have moved our books from the main living room space in the apartment to their own room. And in doing that, I took all of my partner's books off my shelves and put them on his very own shelf in our bedroom. So I'm not going to include that shelf because those are all of his books and only his books. And so all of the books here are all of my books and only my books. So I'm really excited and let's just get right into it. I am gonna talk through the shelves and how I organize them, but I'm not gonna bring out every single book. Let's get into it. So first off on the other side of the room, I have my TBR cart next to my little chair where I like to read. On top are books that I want to read soon. Below are the other books on my shelf that I have not read yet, and then the books on the bottom are the to be hauled, so I will be doing another haul video somewhat soon as, as you can see, that shelf is starting to get a little full. So that's how I organize my TBR cart. I'm very proud that my physical TBR has been dwindling, so... And then these are my other three shelves. So this is the bulk of my collection. Let's start on the far side. So up top, I have my manga, which is a very limited collection at the moment. However, I hope that that will change in the future as well as Twilight, just so that Twilight has somewhere to go. <laughs> Moving down, I have my Harry Potter books and I do not agree with some of JK Rowling's um, out views on life but because I bought these books way before that and they have meant a lot for me in my childhood I do keep them but I try and keep them out of view for my videos because I do support the trans community and the whole queer community and everything like that then on the other side are actually all of my dictionaries so these are my dictionaries and books in other languages I have multiple books there. Um, I am an avid language learner. I am a polyglot, so I do need my own section to translated fiction um, into other languages as well as my dictionaries. If you are interested, I just started a second channel about language learning. It is called Languages with Laura. Feel free to check that out if you are interested. Moving down, I have some of my classics and other just kind of random fiction that like I might get rid of if I don't want it on my shelf by next year or by the next time I do an unhaul. So yeah, some of them are classics and the classics will stay, but otherwise they're just kind of independent books that are just kind of there. Next shelf down is all of my like fantasy kind of series mostly. So this is the series that I am working my way through. I love the Ugly series when I was younger. I love this trilogy and this trilogy kind of that trilogy, this trilogy, and I do have an empty space here next to Shatter Me for more of the Shatter Me books. I have purchased the next two, and so there is space for those on the shelf once I film that haul. So that, yeah, this is kind of the trilogy short series fantasy shelf. Then moving on to the shelf below that, these are some of my other fantasies that I very much enjoyed. Yeah, other fantasies that I would probably use in a recommendation video or that I really liked, they're kind of organized by color and height a little bit. So just to see a nice smooth transition from one side to the next, that's really how it's organized. And my bottom shelf are all the other series that I like. Some of them are quite a bit older, so again, they're not to be featured in videos, but I still really enjoyed them or want to keep them such as I want to keep 
the Maze Runner series, even though I did not finish those. The selection I loved. The series I'm working on. And yeah, everything else I really enjoyed. But I don't really talk about them, so they're just kind of on the bottom shelf. Moving on to the middle shelf, I actually have my little poster here until I figure out kind of where and how I want to hang it up if I do. Then it's all of my fairy tale retellings. So all of the Disney Twisted Tales are here, some of my beautiful Irish and Celtic editions um, because I've been doing a lot of research in those for my own personal writing projects. And then some of my other like fairy tale inspired kind of retellings and whatnot that I've very much enjoyed. Moving down to the next shelf and removing my candle, I have my historical fiction all together here. Um, these are sorted mostly by size, uh, other than Carrie Maniscalco's series there. It goes like tall to short paperback. Uh, and then it kind of goes into my classics because historical fiction and classics just feel like they go together because they're both old in one way or another. And then here I have my little compass decoration hanging off the side here, um, as that is the theme for my bookshelves that I really want to get into is a travel and fantasy world and everything like that. Moving on is my rainbow contemporary shelf. So these are all of my contemporary books. They are in rainbow order. I have like the occasional scattered romance here, like window shopping and my killer vacation. Just because I don't read enough romance to buy the romances that I really like to give them their own section. So they just kind of blend in with my contemporaries. My bottom shelf, I have my middle grade section here. So I am almost done completing this series. And then I have these, these other middle grades that I've enjoyed reading either as an adult or as a young child. And then I have some more YA series, but I read in middle school like as a middle grader so like the Divergent trilogy I read in middle school and Percy Jackson I read in middle school and so they all kind of go together there and then I have my graphic novels because I didn't know where else to put them with how many I have and how tall these are <laughs> so graphic novel just kind of get their own little corner over there I have my final shelf this is kind of more of my overall favorites shelf or I mean this is the shelf that I put the most effort into because this is also the only bookshelf of these three that I will be keeping when we move back to Michigan so I will be selling these two light brown ones and keeping this white one and because I like the look of the shelf a lot more I put more effort into organizing the books on it so Starting at the top, we have Thrillers, and Dark Academia is the stack on the right. Dark Academia is sorted kind of by color. Thrillers are sorted by size and color. Now this next shelf, we continue the Thrillers here on the right, and these are kind of the more colorful ones, um, the brighter colors, so those are more by size as well as color. And then I actually have Sarah J Mass over here. So Sarah J Mass is not thriller, obviously. She is fantasy. I just, I bought this set after I <laughs> reorganized everything, and I just did not have a spot for her. So when we move, she won't continue to live with the thrillers. But for now, this is where Sarah J Mass is living, which is, to be fair, right above my favorite fantasies. So these are all the fantasies on my shelf that are my absolute favorite of the favorite, you know, Kingdom of the Wicked by Carrie Maniscalco, the Cool Prince trilogy, and other Holly Black books, the Wilder Wolf duology, Serpent and Dove trilogy, you know, Shannon McGuire and Emily Wilde's Encyclopedia of Fairies. These are some of the favorite fantasies that I've read, like I said, and they all just kind of go together color scheme wise of like black, white with spurts of red. I, it fit that color scheme before I added more books to it, but I still enjoy how they look together. The final shelf that I have are all of my mythology fantasy or like heavily culturally based 
fantasy. And I do have this sorted kind of by like culture and continent. So starting on the left, we have some Norse European, so like Irish, and then it goes into Russian a little bit. And then I have my couple of African or African American inspired, and then we go into South Asia with Tiger's Curse, Monsters Born and Made, Star Daughter, and that's kind of South Asian until we get into uh, Arab Middle Eastern. And then that goes from, you know, We Hunt the Flame, The Candle and the Flame, Girl Serpent Thorn is kind of more Persian. And then we go back into Eastern Asia with The Girl Who Fell Beneath the Sea, which is a Korean mythology story, and Six Crimson Cranes duology, which is based in Chinese mythology. So it's not perfect, but I I enjoy. And, and I really wanted to keep the light colors, the pastels together, and then have the dark in their own little world. And so that's why I like having the compass there, because this is the cultural mythology section, which is my favorite subgenre. So those are all of my books. I counted them at one point. I don't remember the number. I think it was somewhere in like the three or four hundreds. So not close to having my own library as that is a thousand books, but you know, we're getting there and that's okay. It can be a slow process, but that is kind of the overview. I don't have a lot of trinkets on my shelves. I'm kind of transitioning into spring and also, like I said, just kind of reevaluating how I decorate my shelves before we have a more permanent move. So, there you have them. So, that is my bookshelf tour. Let me know if you all liked this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. Comment down below how you sort, sort yourselves, how you organize them in the future. I want to be better about keeping the two fantasy sections together to create one fantasy section. But otherwise, everything else I'm like very happy with. Otherwise, I have bookish social media linked down below. You can keep up with what I am reading there. Make sure you subscribe if you like bookish content because I try to post videos on Sundays and Wednesdays. And as I mentioned earlier in the video, I have recently started a second channel that is focused on language learning. So this is tips on language learning, travel vlogs, you know, anything like that. So if you're interested, feel free to head over there. I will have a link to it also in the description below. So make sure you check that out. Until I see you all in the next video, I wish you happy reading.